welcome to Grow to Glow podcast with me, Myra. Today's episode is all about our internal saboteur and procrastination. It has been our theme of the month throughout May and also the topic of discussion for our book group. And it has been the theme of all of our social media posts on our Instagram and Twitter page throughout the month. If you came to our book group, well, one of the benefits in coming to our book group, in fact, has been that you didn't have to actually read the book of the month, which was called The Little Saboteur, in order to have attended the book group. But for those of you that came to the book group, the aim really was for us to have the discussion around what we thought our little saboteur was, how it shows up in our life and how we can actually deal with that procrastination cycle. We can sometimes find ourselves getting caught up in that loop. Now, first of all, some of you might be thinking, well, what is our little saboteur? It can also be known as our internal critic or inner critic. And it shows up at that crucial moment, just as we're about to start a new project or task, or we've identified a goal and we just can't get going. We just cannot take that first step. In the book of the month, The Little Saboteur, it defined our little saboteur, our internal critic, as that border patrol, like a bodyguard or or, or border patrol between our comfort zone and our zone of personal growth. It stops us from growing. And what it does is it creates invisible limits or creates invisible limits that we feel then that we cannot overcome. It puts in place barriers and challenges, and these can show up as thoughts and worries and anxieties about why we feel then we can't take those steps towards achieving our goals. Now, what's really interesting about that little saboteur within us is actually it has good intentions that it's there to actually try and protect us. So sometimes we can kind of see it as our internal safeguarding rather than somebody that wants to come in and actually be destructive or cruel or harmful to us in any way. And that's because it's based on a feeling of fear or anxiety of what might come at us if we start on that journey of working towards our goals. So it can appear at different points in that timeline on that point between starting point and that perceived finish line. And it can show up in different areas of our life as well. Very often we experience it if we have a deadline for work or for our studies, such as an an assignment or essay deadline, or if we have a particular task or project at work and we just cannot get going on it. So our internal saboteur, quickly shows up then when we recognise that we have a finish line that we need to reach or a deadline that we need to reach or a final product that we need to have created or we needed to have submitted a project. There's a completion line, a finish line there. But the problem is not so much the perceived finish line, but actually where we are. Because right now, when we have a new task or a new project or an assignment, we're actually in the starting blocks. We're right at the start line. And it's not so much getting to the finish line that's the problem, but actually getting off the starting blocks. And this is where then that little saboteur can show up and stop us from moving forward. So as I've mentioned, our little saboteur can show up as procrastination, where we end up sitting on the sofa all day and watching a box set or sitting in front of a movie all day or finding 101 other things that in that moment seem so much more vital and important to do such as hoovering or defrosting the, the, the freezer. So our procrastination, um, that internal saboteur, can show up at that crucial moment where we're trying to get off this starting block. Now, it's really important that we actually understand what that procrastination and diversion cycle is, how it gets triggered and how we get stuck on that cycle. Now, the cycle itself start at that moment where we recognise we have a task. So we're on that starting block and we can see the finish line down that down that lane of 100 metres. But in that starting block, all of a sudden we're feeling negative feelings or fear of what is between us and that starting block and then that finish line. So if we feel overwhelmed, worried, anxious or fearful of what we might have to or we might come across and what we might have to overcome in that 100 metres between the starting block and the finish line, 
then that's going to put anyone off from even getting going, from even starting. And so we quickly find, miraculously find lots of other things that need our attention. Now, whilst those diversions, whilst those other things may feel in the moment as, ah, oh, this, this is helping, or it's helped me to get that diversion off from that main task or project. The problem is, is that that, that small relief that you feel in the day of sitting in front of Netflix, for example, or defrosting the refrigerator, means that the moment you go back to start thinking about that task at hand, your negative feelings and your fear may actually have gone up. And so going back to the starting block for a second time and looking down that 100 metre lane at the finish line, all of a sudden then the challenges, the difficulties, the hard work actually feels a lot harder. And so what do we do for a second time? We go off down this diversion cycle again. You know, we go off on a tangent and we go down what I call procrastination street. So we take a left hand turn and we find ourselves sitting in a coffee shop, reading a book, meeting up with friends, um, being online all day or scrolling through social media. And again, what happens? We come back to the starting block for a third time. And guess what? The challenges and the difficulties and the fear and the worry and the anxiety that we feel has increased yet again. So what do we do? We go off down Procrastination Street again and find something else now that needs our immediate attention. So you can start to see how that cycle gets created in which every time we come back to thinking about the task at hand, it feels harder and harder each time. Now, there are only two ways that we very often can break that cycle if, that's that, if that cycle is something that we're prone to do. The first option is that we then ditch that project completely. We think it's just way too difficult, too hard, too challenging, so I won't bother at all. So in fact, that finish line gets just pushed to one side. We just think, nope, we're not going to do it. The second option to break out of that cycle, or what we find that we end up doing, is when it's a project that we can't easily just dismiss or say, I don't no longer want to do it such as an essay or a study assignment, a course assignment or a work deadline or a project. It's a task we have to complete. So what do we do? We do it last minute. We do it when we literally don't have the time to be diverted, when we don't have the time to spend elsewhere. So just as a quick reminder, the two options to get out that we do to get out of the cycle is either we ditch the project completely or we do it at the last minute. So if like you and, and like myself, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm being called lastminute.com. If you're somebody who finds themselves doing things lastminute.com, then you know that you have been stuck in this diversion procrastination cycle and you get distracted by then procrastination street. Now, there are some ways that we can deal then with our internal saboteur who distracts us by nice things at, dis at, at, at procrastination street. But we've always got to remember that our internal saboteur is actually there for the best of intentions. It's there, as I said earlier, as that internal protection. So we've always got to remember that it has good intentions and purposes for us. So every time you find yourself going up or being diverted at Procrastination Street, what you need to ask yourself is, what is this trying to achieve for you? What is this procrastination or, or this diversion trying to do for you? What is it trying to protect you from? What's it keeping you safe from? And very often what you might find is that it's trying to protect you from a feeling of worry, anxiety or fear that we have projected onto that lane in front of us, you know, the 100 metres between the starting block and the finish line. We have imagined that what is between us and the finish line are literal hurdles and that to get over them, not being Olympic hurdlists here, trying to get over them is going to be too difficult for us or it's going to require such great effort from us that we'd rather not face it. So our internal saboteur gets kicked in or gets triggered because it's trying to keep us safe. It's trying to alleviate those feelings of anxiety and worry. But of course, that's only the starting step in order for us to get and get to and reach that finish line. So the first step, as I said, is that to ask yourself, what is it that it's trying to protect you from? 
Once you've recognised that, it's then switching up or flipping that negative projection, that negative feeling or thought into something more positive so that the journey that you imagine that you're going to take between the starting block and the finish line is going to be one that is positive because you can see already that that procrastination cycle is triggered by the thought of that journey being negative. So our language and how we speak to ourselves about finishing that task, starting that task, completing the task needs to be positive. So this is where the power of language can be really important and helpful to us to get us from starting point A to finish point B. So examples such as I get to dot 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 fill in the blanks. I have the opportunity to dot 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 whatever it is that task is or that project is. So rather than I have to write an essay, I've got to get this done. What actually is that journey giving you the opportunity to do? This essay is giving me the opportunity to demonstrate what I've learned this term or this project is giving me the opportunity to showcase my skills. It's giving me an opportunity to be seen by some of the leaders within my organisation. I get to show or demonstrate my skills. I get to work as part of a team. I get to network with people. So what does the journey between the starting point and the finish line actually get you to do? So your power of language, how you speak to yourself about that task or project is really one vital way that you could actually start to get going. Now, another tip to help you get moving off the starting block is to focus on the solutions. As I said earlier, the procrastination cycle starts from a point of negativity, but also perhaps highlight or is actually trying to shine a light upon the negative challenges and difficulties that you're going to have to overcome in order to get to the finish line. However, again, flipping it around, by focusing, focusing on solutions, you then get to look again at the positives in your journey. So rather than thinking about hurdles, it's about looking at how smoothly that journey is going to be. So you can ask yourself, what's the best way of doing this? How can I continue? Or what would the first step be? So you're starting to identify solutions in that journey. Now, five strategic steps that the book The Little Saboteur highlighted was a five step process to overcome your internal saboteur and procrastination. Now, these five steps amount then to you actually getting going and maintaining momentum as you run down and sprint down that track to the finish line. So to quickly outline the five steps that the book addresses are number one, to make a definite decision. Procrastination Street and your internal saboteur, it really loves when you make a very vague or general choice about what you're going to do with your task. But by making a definite decision about your very next step, about what you're trying to achieve, what the finish line looks like, you're going to have a much easier starting time on that starting block. So step one is to make a definite decision. Step two, then, is to draw a clear plan of goals to identify a very clear structure of what you're going to do each step of the way between starting point and finish point. Number three, then, is to put them into practice. So this is you having identified the goals, identified the plan and the goals for each step. You can actually start now to fulfil them. Take that first step. And as you progress through your plan and take each step, your fourth point then is to monitor the results you're getting each time you, you achieve the next step. By monitoring those results, you actually get to then track how well you're doing. And then finally, the fifth step then is to reward yourself for success. Now, I don't mean just rewarding yourself when you cross that finish line. I'm talking about rewarding yourself for every single step you've taken between starting point and finish line. So you've taken that first step, you've drawn up a plan of goals, celebrate, pat yourself on the back. You've taken the next step, again, reward yourself. This way then, you're actually creating momentum, a bit like a steam engine in, on a train or a juggernaut. By creating that momentum, it gives you the literal power and energy to keep going. 
And like any runner or, or sprint athlete, once you get up and get going, that momentum will literally get you to the finish line and way past it. So very quickly, just to recap those five steps. Number one, make a definite decision. Number two, draw a clear plan of goals. Number three, put them into practice. Number four, monitor your interim results and then your final results. And the fifth point is reward yourself for success at every step you've taken. So I hope that's been a really quick and useful overview of what it, your internal saboteur is trying to get you to do, but also ways in which you can get your internal saboteur to actually help you. Thank you for joining me for today's grow to grow podcast episode. And throughout the month of June, we are discussing the theme of relationships and attachments. And our book of the month for June is Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. If you'd like to join me for our June book group discussion, which is taking place on Thursday, the 25th of June, you can check out our Twitter and Instagram pages for all the details. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram at growtoglow.flow and over on Twitter at growtoglow underscore flow. So I hope to see many of you throughout the month of June as we discuss the topics of relationships and attachments. And for any of you that would like to join our June book group discussion, you can check out the details on our social media. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now.